We have a couple of messages now, and then we'll move on towards the question and answers, and their refreshments too. Um, we have a message from uh, Ms. Farah Naz Isfahani. She's the wife of former American ambassador, Mr. Hussein Nakani. In her own right, she's a mem former member of the National Assembly and is uh, currently a public policy scholar at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. I'd please, and she's also the author of the upcoming book, Pakistan, The Purification of the Land of the Pure. May I please request Asif to come and uh, read out the message? Thanks. True democracy is not just about the right to vote. The freedom of polity to be safe to express itself freely, and ultimately to be equal. If not in number, then as citizens, is the essence of the democratic ideal for which Pakistan was created. Mob politics and the daily lives of our citizens suffering under the gun of militant groups cannot lead to a happy future for our country. I'm very sorry. <laughs> no, it's, well, there's more to say, so. The contrived card. I, I wish to congratulate you. Oh, I'm very sorry about this again. <laughs> Do you want me to read No, it's fine, it's fine. I, I'm glad, yeah. Are you still on the front page? No, you're still not. This is a very long message, I'm very sorry. It is not. Yeah, we start from there. Okay. I wish to congratulate the organizers of this conference and each and every speaker and participant. I wish I could have been there with you, but please know that I'm very much in spirit with all of those gathered. Thanks to me, I've read her message like four times. What I want to share with you today are my views about the very alarming trend of the Pakistani state moving away, away from a true and pluralistic democracy and towards a system of confessional politics. We began our lives as a nation with hope and idealism. Pakistan and Pakistanis had those beliefs because of the foundation laid by our Qaid Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Though ignored in our textbooks, in the speeches of parliamentarians and by our state institutions, the speech Mr. Jinnah gave to the first Constituent Assembly of Pakistan on August 11, 1947, should have been enough guidance to our rulers and permanent establishment. Here are those words. We should begin to work in that spirit, and in course of time, all these angularities of the majority and minority communities, the Hindu community and the Muslim community, because even as regards Muslims, you have Pathans, Punjabis, Shias, Sunnis, and so on. And among Hindus, you have Brahmins, Vaishnavas, Khatris, also Bengalis, Madrasis, and so on, will vanish. You are free. You are free to go to your temples. You are free to go to your mosques or to any other place or worship in this state of Pakistan. You may belong to any religion or caste or creed. That has nothing to do with this business of the state. According to the Qaid, you will find that in course of time, Hindus would cease to be Hindus and Muslims would cease to be Muslims, not in the religious sense, because that is the personal faith of in each individual, but in the political sense as citizens of the state. Having grown up in a family where Mr. Jinnah was known personally, his vision was what propelled us towards this new, brighter future in a new nation. The contrived Qaeda of Pakistan's current textbooks never existed. It is nothing less than a tragedy that in post Zawlaq Pakistan, youngsters appear to have been brainwashed with an image of the founding father that has nothing to do with reality. Pakistan's less powerful communities, like the, uh, communities like the large Shia population, is still being steadily targeted, whether it is the Shia doctors, 
and other professionals being killed one by one, while the rest collect their families and leave their homeland for safer grounds. Or the poor and voiceless Christian communities, the Hindus of Sindh, or our Ahmadi brothers and sisters, none should be forgotten. The nation must wake up and wake up soon. We have to make choices today. Our youth has seen more military dictatorships than democracy. The interrupted democracies of Pakistan and their subsequent demonization by our establishment and our free media are undermining the pluralist ideas of our founding fathers. True democracy is not just about the right to vote. The freedom of the polity to be safe, to express itself freely, and ultimately to be equal, if not in number, then as citizens is the essence of the democratic ideal for which Pakistan was created. Mob politics and the daily lives of our citizens suffering under the gun of militant groups cannot lead to a happy future for our country. We need to envision a future that is closer to the founders' aspirations than what was built by those who lost the way. That future can only be one that turns its back on the steady descent towards confessional politics. The state has no business interfering in the personal lives and devotional activities of its citizens as long as they are practiced in a non-violent form and do not put other citizens at risk. And the Pakistani constitution should not reflect confessionalism by defining who is or who is not a Muslim. The state of Pakistan must get out of the business of interfering and in uh, legislating in religious matters. This dangerous drift has to be arrested or the, uh, or the Pakistan that was born at the cost of millions of lives will fail to exist in spirit even though it lives on in reality. Thank you.